Good afternoon, Syracuse. Welcome to NCC News at 4 o'clock. I'm Heisa Dominguez. And I'm Heather Fountaine. While the controversy over, over the Obama administration's drone program seems to be at an all-time high, the CIA is close to wiping their hands clean. Three senior U.S. officials have stated that the White House is set to sign off on a plan to move the CIA's lethal targeting program to the Defense Department. The proposed move could potentially toughen the criteria for drone strikes by creating a uniform set of rules and procedures. Coca-Cola announced today that they will be cutting 750 jobs. The world's largest beverage maker says job cuts will be across the board, affecting about 1% of the company's workforce in North America. Affected individuals will be notified in the coming weeks. According to company spokesperson, about a quarter of the jobs cut will be in Atlanta. Many soda fanatics are enjoying their supersized drinks today. Mississippi Governor Phil Bryant signed a law preventing counties, districts, and towns from imposing rules that limit portion sizes. The new Mississippi law comes from New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg's failed attempt to ban the sale of large sugary drinks in the city. The anti-Bloomberg bill says only state legislators have the authority to regulate the sale of food. President Obama visited the West Bank today. <laughs> today, um, and stresses the need for Israelis and Palestinians to work together on a two state agreement. He agrees that Palestinians deserve a future of hope and a state of their own. The president also visited with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu yesterday and found common ground on issues like Israel's right to defend itself. President Obama envisions these two nations and neighbors at peace. Chemical weapons in Syria? The United Nations will investigate the claim that rebels use them in the country. However, opposition groups are insisting that the Syrian regime itself use the chemical weapons. United States officials say there is no evidence to back up either claims, but Israeli officials say that it's clear that chemical weapons have definitely been used. The cyber attack targeting South Korea is now linked to an IP address in China, which has increased suspicion of North Korean involvement. The attack Wednesday damaged 32,000 computers and servers at media companies and banks. The malware either slowed the system or shut it down completely. North Korea was an immediate suspect, especially after their recent threats to go to war with the South. Temperatures are hovering near freezing. We'll be right back.
I'm going to say, well, the Okay. Spring is almost here. I'm just going to move to you. And I'm going to be like, spring is almost here. That's exciting. I know. The weather has been really great today. It's been sunny, although there was snow a couple days ago. Syracuse temperature is really playing with our hearts here. Well, you know, it's definitely true. Winter left like a lamb instead of a lion. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with coming back from spring break, a lot of people were all used to the sun, and now we've got to put on those Ugg boots and winter jackets back on. But I'm excited to kind of unzip them again. Well, the SU men's basketball team is out in California getting ready for the game tonight, but we got a little sunshine ourselves. Matt, how's the weather looking out there? Thanks, Isa. I was just outside, and as you can see, the sun was peeking through the clouds a little bit earlier, but now it's getting pretty gray again. Temperature outside is 31 right now, barometer 29.71 inches and falling, meaning there's a storm coming through a little bit later. Humidity is hovering around 48%, and the wind's 16 miles an hour from the west. Looking now at the Doppler radar, as you can see, a little bit of action here. Some wintry mix coming through as the temperature hovers around the freezing point. Not too much to be concerned of. We'll move now to the snowfall map coming up later tonight. And you can see the Tug Hill Plateau here, expecting about one to four inches of snow. But Syracuse and the southern part of central New York, a trace to one inch for tomorrow, or excuse me, by 8 p.m. tonight. Moving on now to the New York State temperature map, you can see here, Pretty much, pretty much the same temperatures all around New York State. Again, hovering around that freezing mark. Jamestown, the low over here at 21. Messina up, in, up near Canada, 32 degrees. Pretty rare for the northern part of New York to be warmer than Jamestown, but there it is. Moving on now to the national temperatures. You can see Syracuse men's team out here in San Jose experiencing not warm temperatures like they like to see, probably. 43 degrees out there. And then back here uh, along the eastern, uh, pretty much cold across the whole country. Warmest part down here in Austin, Texas. Some more NCAA games going on down there. And they're in high 60s to low 70s. Looking now into tonight. Tonight's temperature, 29 degrees, mostly cloudy, with some localized snow showers, as I mentioned. Be careful on the roads. Winds 10 to 15 miles an hour out of the west-southwest. And now looking into tomorrow, again, some more of that snow continuing. Partly cloudy skies and two to four inches of snow expected, a high around 33 degrees. So please be careful if you're going to be on the roads tomorrow. And now we'll look at the five-day forecast. Friday, 33, low of 27. And Saturday, more of the same, a high of 37 and a low of 26. Sunday, partly cloudy, a high of 38 and a low of 27. Monday, the clouds continue there with a high of 41. And Tuesday, that S word, the snow's back, 41 degrees is the high. So it looks like just about every time it's going to get warmer, that snow comes right on back. It's tough, Heather, but this is Syracuse after all. We've got to be grateful for the sun like we saw today when it peaks out from behind the clouds. That's true. I guess last year just got me excited when it was like 80 degrees. I wish I could go time. back. 79 <laughs> was nice uh, hanging out. Uh, I had the day off, so I was able to spend the, some time out in the nice warm weather. We'll I see if it so. comes back soon. Hopefully. Well, March Madness may be all about sports for you, but for Syracuse businesses, it's all about bringing in the Orange fans. We'll be right back after the break.
March Madness may be all about sports for you, but for Syracuse businesses, it's about bringing in the Orange fans. NCC News reporter Mr. Elena Agolfapulu joins us now with a closer look on how the madness is affecting small businesses here in Syracuse. Mr. Elena. That's right, March Madness is here, and businesses all over Syracuse are trying to target Orange fans, each in its own way. Take a look. The bar's to my right, but the hot spot for tonight's game is right behind me, a barber shop where customers get more than just haircuts. How would a barber shop see an increase in sales during March Madness? We'll usually just open up the doors and turn the, the volume all the way up. <laughs> just have the games playing, and they want to come in, they come in, and... The Hall of Fame Barbershop in Armory Square created what they call a man cave. An HDTV, orange memorabilia, comfortable couches, and drinks with snacks. Sales have skyrocketed for this small business, with sports bringing in more customers. Other businesses feel the rise, too. For Tully's, a sports fan favorite, March is the busiest month of the year, says the manager. Manny's, an apparel business on Marshall Street, adds that it also depends on SU's performance. A long path into the NCAA by SU will mean more sales to Orange fans in central New York. Other businesses are also taking advantage of the madness. DJ's in downtown Syracuse offers a buy one get one free deal tonight. And if you're closer to the hill, check out Fagan's where all drinks will be $3 tonight. Now, if you're planning on heading out to town to watch SU take on Montana tonight, go to nccnewsonline.com for a full list of March Madness specials and promos in Syracuse. Back to you, Heather. Thanks, Mr. Elena. Along with the game tonight, Orange Nation has learned of an ongoing NCAA investigation of Syracuse athletics. Our sports reporter Stephanie Jacobs has the latest details. Stephanie, what are officials saying about the investigation? You know, not much, and that's the thing. This is a really wide-ranging investigation. Hearing words like eligibility issues, sexual assault, drug use with some of the players on the team, but really, we're not hearing much from Bayheim. We're not hearing much from the athletic director, so it's really hard to say what is going on. Now, these are some strong words. What are some of the consequences that could come? You know, um, again, like I said, the word is mum from everyone, but hopefully this won't affect us in the future, next year, because it's also not just basketball, but football as well. So let's, let's hope nothing. And do you think bad. these are going to affect how Syracuse plays tonight? You know, I, I hope not for the orange, we're all orange fans here, but um, it's hard to say, probably not. Let's hope their head is in the game and that they're just focusing on that and not these allegations. Let's hope so. I know. Sweet tooths from around, the, around New York and neighboring states will flock to Maple Syrup Farms for Maple Weekend. The tourism event is sponsored by New York State Maple Producers Association. It's an open house event for tourists and state residents to understand more about the syrup making process, including the health benefits and the economic impacts of the product. Here we'll have a bunch of samples to try. Uh, you can go up into the woods and see how we, our tubing system works. Uh, if the weather cooperates and we get some sap, we'll run the evaporator. More than 110 maple producers across the state will host open houses this weekend. This week marks the 10th anniversary of the start of the Iraq War, and while troops are no longer there, a struggle still exists stateside. In some respects, uh, veterans are still struggling. You know, we still have uh, what I would describe as a crisis level of suicide among, among our veteran population. I think a lot of the positive momentum that we've been able to realize is a function of the fact that the, the concerns of veterans have remained so much in the media and in, in public discourse. Haney says there's still work to be done and veterans need to leverage what they learned in the military to create opportunities. Officials have released the mugshot of 29-year-old David Renz. Renz of Cicero is accused of kidnapping and killing a Liverpool librarian and raping her 10-year-old daughter in the town of Clay. He was attacked and severely beaten while in prison. Governor Cuomo and New York State lawmakers came to an agreement today on the state budget. Cuomo announced the tentative 2013 to 14 budget this morning that will keep spending increases under 2 percent. They'll work on other issues. We might have an agreement with other issues. We want to get the budget itself underway. 
The budget deals includes raising the minimum wage to nine dollars by 2015 and gives tax breaks to middle class families and businesses. Breaking news out of Albany, the New York delegation of the National Rifle Association has filed a lawsuit in federal court seeking an injunction to stop the state's new gun control law. Under Second Amendment grounds, the group is challenging the state's new definition of illegal assault weapons that now includes formerly legal semi-automatic rifles. Maintaining service at the locations across New York State, which are currently serviced by your two airlines. The whole U.S. Airways CEO Doug Parker promised at a, US, at a U.S. Senate hearing today that the airline will not cut service and employment at upstate airports as part of its merger with American Airlines. Parker reassured Senator Schumer that the proposed merger will not put New York job routes or affordable airfare at risk. Representative Dan Maffei is in disagreement with the tax that President Obama is using to help fund Obamacare. Maffei, a Democrat, introduced a bill that would be against Obama's current excise tax on medical devices. The tax is currently used to help pay for health care reform, but medical device manufacturers have been unhappy with it. Welch Allen, a manufacturer out of Skinny Atlas Falls, blamed the tax for layoffs that happened back in September. Repeals of the bill have been attempted in the past but have been unable to gain any traction. Tonight, a community in, comes together to pray for six-month-old baby Easton, who has been in critical condition since early last week. Easton was born with the rare disease known as EB, a painful skin condition which causes painful blisters that can lead to infection. Today, according to the family's Facebook page, he was placed on steady sedation and a paralytic to keep him from fatal harm. Tonight's prayer service will be in Lakes Church in Auburn at 7 p.m. in the East Genesee Street. Coming up after the break, we'll have our very own Stephanie Jacobs with sports. Welcome back. So, Stephanie, what's ahead for the SU basketball team as it kicks off its opener in the NCAA tournament tonight? Well, the fourth-seeded Orange begins its run to the Final Four tonight with a matchup against 13th-seeded Montana. The second-round game will take place at 10 p.m. tonight in San Jose. The Orange are coming off a run to the Big East tournament title game where they lost to Louisville. The Orange need Michael Carter-Williams to step up and be more successful dishing the rock like he did in non-conference play, while James Sutherland will need to continue his hot shooting from beyond the arc. The arc. And in high school basketball news, the Fayetteville Manlius Varsity Boys basketball team are the winners of a state championship, but not for what you might think. I spoke with head coach Tom Blackford and some of the players to see just what this honor is all about. 
These days, being a student can be challenging enough. Add to that the pressures of being a high school athlete, and you can imagine how hard it will be to score on tests, let alone the court. Well, it's like the pressures are kind of like because you have practices when you want to be studying and you're studying when you want to have practice, so it's, you kind of have to strike a balance between the two. This year, however, the FM Boys Varsity basketball team has found this balance. They were named state champions for academic achievement while also finishing their season 17-3. This year, out of 13 players, we had 12 out of 13 had a 90 or above average, and we actually, our final acume was 96.26. Um, and out of 220 schools in the state who qualified, we were number one. The team was happy to win an award that validated all of their hard work both on and off the court. It's really exciting. We were all proud of each other and it's FM's a great like, school district and, and um, so it's challenging classes and courses but and we, we have a lot of bright kids that take tough classes so it was uh, exciting to know that. The Scholar Athlete Team Award proves how the FM Boys basketball team is truly redefining what it means to be a student athlete. Stephanie Jacobs, NCC News. And for more information about FM basketball and the Scholar Athlete Team Awards, head over to nccnewsonline.com. And the Knicks got back in the win column last night, beating the Orlando Magic 106-94. J.R. Smith led New York with 22 points, and Carmelo Anthony added eight rebounds. The Knicks improved to 40-26 on the season. The team returns to the court on Friday when it travels to Toronto to face the Raptors. And some top NFL players are on the move in free agency. Longtime Bears linebacker Brian Erlacher is expected to leave the team after not being offered a new contract. Veteran Ravens defensive back Ed Reed is expected to sign with the Houston Texans to a two-year, $12 million deal. Reed is expected to provide leadership to um, a defense that faded down the stretch and in the playoffs last year. So about that FM basketball team, yes. I remember when I was in high school how hard it was to have to balance sports and my grades. I think that's really amazing. I know. That was actually my high school. I did not play a sport there, but I thought about it a couple times. But I, I don't know how they do it. Honestly, their seasons are amazing. They're great students. And the courses, like he said, they're really pretty difficult. A lot of college, um, college uh, I can't, courses and a lot of AP courses. So it's pretty amazing. Number one in the state. Well, now that we know that they can do it, they should make it a requirement. I know. You know what? I asked a couple of the other players whether this was uh, from other teams, whether this was pressuring them to get their GPA up. And they said, yeah, now they're going to try to really study some more and try to be like the boys' basketball team. So right. it's, it's definitely awesome. I mean, we've seen how even UConn had troubles in college because they're mm -hmm. not allowed to participate in the tournament. Grades is really obviously an important issue, whether you're yeah. an athlete or not. Exactly. And I think that's something people forget about because obviously the players, they think so much about the games, the, everything that they have to do with their sport, but it is, you gotta, you gotta study and stay in school, and like I know, they say. And even in Syracuse, there's a lot of players that they take the hard credits. It's not just all about the easy, the easy stuff. It's not just about pottery, okay? All right, so when we come back, you can find out what supermodel Kate Upton said to a fan who asked her to her high school prom.
friends like Okay. A group representing Brazilian doctors is urging federal lawmakers to change the country's restrictive abortion law to allow for abortions through the first trimester. Representatives of the Federal Council of Medicine say the high numbers of botched illegal abortions is behind the recommendation, the first of its type the group has made. The government has estimated that some one million abortions are practiced each year in Brazil, many under unhygienic conditions. A lawyer who wanted off the case of a New York man suing for an interest in Facebook has been denied his request to withdraw. Ohio attorney Dean Boland asked to be removed as Paul Saliga's attorney in the fall. He said his reasons were private, but it was revealed during a court hearing that he was concerned for his safety. Caliga of Wellsville at first objected to losing his lead attorney, but later agreed to it. Ne later agreed to it. Nevertheless, a federal judge in Buffalo said no, writing Wednesday that Boland's reasons for withdrawing were insufficient and his departure could delay the case. A suicide bombing tore through a mosque in the Syrian capital on Thursday, killing a top Sunni Muslim preacher and longtime supporter of President Bashar Assad, along with at least 13 other groups. 17-year-old Jake Davison took to YouTube to invite Sports Illustrated swimsuit model Kate Upton to his prom. Though Kate hasn't verified her attendance, chances look promising for Davison after he was given the opportunity to speak directly with the model on the Today Show. I think that's kind of interesting. I mean, I've never had the guts to ask a celebrity to prom. I mean, I would have loved to have Justin Timberlake. <laughs> Very good point. I, I mean, I remember when I was asked to prom, it was my boyfriend. We had been together for, I don't know, six months or so. It, was, it wasn't very romantic. It was kind of expected. What about you? I mean, I, had, I was asked very romantically. We had the whole corsage and, you know, placing of the wrist. I wish it would have been a nice piece of jewelry, but hey, we'll settle. I mean, this might not be surprising, but prom for me was very romantic, too. It was right on the water, and my boyfriend actually told me that he loved me that time for the first time. We're not together anymore, but it was still... <laughs> it was still a great time at the, in the moment. <laughs> well, at least you have that memory with your high school sweetheart. And I'll tell you one more thing about celebrity gossip. I'm just getting breaking news that Joe Jonas has a sex tape that's out. Oh, that's outrageous. I don't know about that. They wear those purity rings, but I guess we'll see. Hey, <laughs> that's all for NCC News at 4 o'clock. I'm Haisa Dominguez. And I'm Heather Fountaine. Stay tuned for NCC News at 445. Have a great night, Syracuse.